Welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as the facilitator of our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use that Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Third announcement, this is just one of a few different sessions that we're offering. So feel free to visit that registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you can access that recording at strivescan.com slash Virginia. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from George Mason University. All righty, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Christina Vidalis and I am a regional admissions representative for George Mason University. I'm gonna go ahead and get my presentation on going so I can share with you all about Mason today. So uh, for starters, um, I've been both a uh, employee at Mason for almost five years now, as well as a transfer student to Mason. So hopefully um, after we uh, talk about Mason today, you won't just take my word for it when I tell you how wonderful an institution Mason is, but you'll also look some more into us after learning about us tonight. To kick things off with some fast facts about Mason, we are the largest public research university in Virginia. We have over 25,000 undergraduate students and another 12,000 grad students on top of that. And our transfer students are a very um, large and very important part of that student population. Each semester, we have just as many transfer students who join the nation nation as we do freshmen, if not more transfers than we do freshmen. And our students are also coming to us from all over. We have students that are coming from um, all 50 states and from over 130 different countries. So when you transfer to Mason, you're gonna be meeting students from all over the world. Our main campus is in Fairfax, Virginia, which is just a short uh, hop, skip, and a jump away from Washington, D.C. itself. But we also have some other campuses that our students have the opportunity to explore as well. We have several that are in the local area. For example, we have um, one that is in Arlington. We have one that is in Prince William. And then our campus, on the other hand, that clocks in as the furthest away is in Songdo, South Korea. My personal favorite campus is a partnership with the Smithsonian Zoo, which created the Smithsonian Mason School of Conservation, which is in Front Royal, Virginia. And it's home to all sorts of endangered species that they are working on conservation efforts with, including um, cheetahs, red pandas, and maned wolves. For academics at Mason, we have a lot for our students to choose from that cover a broad spectrum of disciplines. We have over 80 different majors that include the um, STEM programs, we have the humanities and social sciences, we have business and economics, and also the visual and performing arts, giving our students many options to explore. If you're also looking to add some extra depth to your study, you can add on one of our 200 plus different minors or concentrations, or you could also participate in an accelerated master's program as well. Now, when it comes to the process of transferring to Mason, there are a couple of different ways to do that. And we don't have quite enough time to be able to delve deep into all of these, uh, but I'll just go over a brief overview. Uh, the regular transfer pathway is open to any student, regardless of if you are attending a community college or a four-year institution, or whether it is that you are a student within the state of Virginia or you're coming to us from another state or another country. Open to everybody. The guaranteed admissions agreement is specifically for students who are graduating from the Virginia Community College system with their associate's degree. And even more specific after that is the advanced program, which is for students who are going to Northern Virginia Community College. We also have virtual information sessions that are posted online that go more in depth into all of these different types of admissions processes. So if you're looking for even more in-depth information on transfer information and what that looks like, we do have those resources available for our students. We also try and make the process of transferring to Mason as easy as possible. So we have a lot of resources available to students on our website 
to help facilitate that process. One in particular I want to highlight is our Transfer Credit Explorer, which actually can give you a degree worksheet and show you the progress that you have made towards a degree at Mason based upon the transfer credits that you have completed thus far. We also have an Office of Transfer Services for students if you're looking to connect with an admissions representative one-on-one. -on -one. So you can actually come to campus and meet with us in office and be able to have that opportunity to talk about your specific transfer process, your transfer journey, and any questions that you have about the process of coming to Mason. Similarly, we also have an Office of Military Services where if you are um, a military student, if you have, um, you're going to be using any type of military educational benefits, uh, we have a great staff there that's ready and willing to help you with navigating that process of using those education benefits and really getting the most you can out of that. In addition to having in-person appointments, the Office of Military Services also has virtual appointments that you can find on their website as well, if you prefer to meet with them that way versus coming in office right now. If you're looking to connect with Mason even more after this evening, and I really hope that you will, we have a lot of different ways to do so. As I mentioned, we have our Office of Transfer Services, and we also have virtual tours. We have virtual information sessions that are all happening online, in addition to in-person um, information sessions, in-person tours, and of course, our in-person Office of Transfer Services, which you can all come and visit on campus. And then just the very last thing before I turn it over to the next presenter, this is our office's contact information. So if you are looking to learn more about Mason, if you are looking to get connected with us, here are all the different ways that you can do so. So I greatly appreciate you taking the time to listen to me this evening and hopefully you will come and learn more about Mason and we'll see an application from you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Christina. Our next presenter is from Mary Baldwin University. Hi all, hope you're having a great evening. Give me one second and I will go ahead and share my screen. All right, wonderful. Um, well, my name is Carly Fagan and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Mary Baldwin University. And I want to start off with what's really important to us at MBU, and that's our students. Our goal is to help you find your fit, and Michaela is a student who found hers here, and this is what she has to say about us. I dealt with a lot of insecurity in middle school and high school, and I was content to hide in the background of every class. Coming to MBU, where some of my classes only had about 12 people, meant that I was given the chance to speak up and feel comfortable sharing my thoughts among a class filled with my peers. If you're looking for a school that will make you as an individual feel special, then MBU is the place for you. Mary Baldwin is located one block away from downtown Stanton, which was voted one of the top 20 best small towns in America, as well as one of America's best main streets. MBU is one of the most ethnically diverse campuses. Our class of 2022 is 58% students of color, and our campus is represented by students from 39 states and six different countries. By putting our students first, Mary Baldwin wants you to take what you learn in class and apply it to the real world. We have wonderful academic opportunities from the moment you set foot on campus. Students are able to complete internships starting their freshman year and student senior year, they all complete a senior capstone project. We have many leadership opportunities on campus available to everyone, over 50 clubs and organizations, as well as division three athletics. Mary Baldwin, once again, located in Stanton, Virginia, offers over 50 majors and minors, as well as 11 graduate degree programs. We have roughly 1,000 undergraduate degree students, an average class size of 17, and an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. With class sizes this small, our goal is to make sure you're a great fit for the university, all while finding your calling while you're here. We are proud to offer a few very distinctive programs for women at MBU. Our College for Women is a unique program available exclusively to young women on Mary Baldwin's campus, even though we are a co-ed university. This program is women-centered that builds students' strengths and develops leadership skills. Another great opportunity we have at MBU is our VWIL program. VWIL stands for Virginia Women's Institute for Leaders and is the nation's only all-female core cadets in the country. 
This program builds leadership skills as well as prepares students to enter into the military upon graduation as an officer if they choose to serve. Additionally, MBU offers a unique leadership program specifically designed for African American women. Ida B. Wells is a community for women of African descent who want to explore culture, identity, leadership, and civic engagement as a foundation for their active participation in the college community. Our applications are open and you're able to apply through our website directly. It's free to apply to MBU and we have rolling admissions. Once you receive your application and transcripts, you can expect to hear an admissions decision within two weeks. When applying, we require students to submit an unofficial transcript with a minimum GPA of a 2.0. If you have less than 24 credits, we will need your high school transcripts as well. We accept up to 84 credit hours when transferring in and have a partnership with all Virginia Community College systems. I work directly with our registrar's office and your academic advisor to determine how your credits will transfer in based on your intended area of study. Our goal at Mary Baldwin is to provide you with an affordable private university education. All students who are accepted and attend MBU in seat receive merits-based scholarships that are based on your GPA. This year, our merit scholarships range from 16,000 to 22,000, and you'll get that amount every year you're at MBU. 95% of our students do receive financial aid and scholarships, and students can start expecting financial aid packages as early as Thanksgiving. For our online transfer students, as long as you're enrolled in a minimum of six credits each semester, you are eligible to receive financial aid. All right, thank you all so much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks, Carly. Our next presenter is from Eastern Mennonite University. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, as Jasmine said, my name is Ben Duran. I am the uh, transfer admissions counselor for EMU or Eastern Mennonite University. To start, EMU is located in Harrisonburg, Virginia, so in the Shenandoah Valley. Um, what's great about being in Harrisonburg and in the Valley is we're roughly just two hours away from most of the bigger cities in Virginia if you're wanting to take trips over the weekends or different things like that. So if you want to go sightseeing in Washington, D.C., we're only a two-hour drive from where we're at in Harrisonburg. Charlottesville is only an hour away. Richmond is only two hours away. And then Roanoke's also two hours away. Along with um, being close to all those cities, we also are surrounded by a lot of different outdoor beauty, such as George Washington National Forest, Shenandoah National Park, along with Skyline Drive, the Shenandoah River, and Massanutten Four Seasons Resort, where we do offer skiing and snowboarding classes for credit for students who are interested. Our student body is approximately 1,000 students are enrolled in our undergraduate program, with approximately 1,800 enrolled in all of our EMU programs. Our average GPA of students is a 3.7. Um, and for transfer students specifically, we are just looking for a 2.0 um, when we're looking at transfer students' files. We do have some brand new lab facilities in the Suter Science Center right now that was completed in 2019. Here are some of the pictures of our new lecture hall, a wind tunnel, um, one of our anatomy laboratories. Um, this is a list of all of our majors and minors um, and all of our programs are study. Some of our more popular programs are on the left-hand side, such as nursing, biology, business administration, computer science, engineering, and education. But we have over 50 different majors and minors, along with some accelerated programs as well, too. So there are a lot of options for students who are interested in any type of liberal arts education. 97% of our 2020 job seeking graduates were employed in grad schools or serving in a volunteer or mission position within one year after graduation. And these are some of our different uh, percentages and acceptance rates for the last uh, 15 years or so. I won't read them all, but some of the more uh, important ones is 100% of our teacher education program grads who seek teaching positions are employed within a year of graduation. For our acceptance rate for med schools, we have 81% to medical schools for the last 15 years, 74% to physician assistance programs, and 94% to physical therapy schools in the last 15 years. Professors are mentors who become lifelong friends. Uh, our median class size is 15 with a 10 to one student faculty ratio. So you really get to form those one-on-one -on -one bonds with all your professors, especially those professors who are your advisors in your major uh, disciplines. 
At EMU, we do push a lot of internship and education practicums with a lot of hands-on training as well, um, because we realize they provide an opportunity for on-the-job learning that's valuable as you take your next step after graduating from EMU. For nursing students, we do have clinicals, um, and our nursing students complete clinical placements in multiple hospital and patient care settings in their last two years of being in the nursing program. We also have the Washington Community Scholar Center, or WCSC. This is a house we own in Washington, D.C. Um, it's D.C. group living with other EMU students. While you're there, you have an internship based on your major and specifically what you're wanting to do with your major next step. Um, and you're having that nice competitive D.C. internship on your resume after you graduate, which is always a bonus. We also have a cross-cultural program. And now this is a requirement for any student who goes through EMU. Every student has to take some sort of trip. And as you can see on the right-hand side, the, our options are a semester abroad, summer trips of three or six weeks, or you could do a semester or a 10-week summer option in the Washington, D.C. house. Um, and all these trips have different focuses on them. Um, they're all led by faculty and staff, um, and they all have di great different experiences for students. And then these are some examples of some of our upcoming ones that are coming up, such as Guatemala and Peru um, in this upcoming year, um, along with DC and several others as well. We also have a lot of different campus events um, for students, such as Fall Festival and Homecoming Weekends, our International Food Festival, which is all student run, Royals Ball, which is a winter's formal dance. Our Tuesday trivia is always a big hit. Um, it's held in our on-campus coffee shop. And then we also have different theater productions and art gallery openings throughout the year as well. We do also have some great campus recreations options as well, such as our fitness center, which is open all the time for students. Intramurals that range from your traditional intramurals um, to even more uh, unique ones, such as esports or uh, spike ball, different things like that. And we also have a climbing wall on campus. This is a list of all of our clubs and organizations. Um, some of the more popular ones is our Young Democrats Club, College Republicans Club, our Campus Activities Council, our Safe Space Club, um, and several others on here. But if there's a club that you're uh, wanting to start on campus, this is definitely an option for you as well too. Then this is a list of some of our student services on campus as well, such as counseling services, which are completely free for all students. Um, we do have a barber shop on campus as well that's completely student run, um, along with several other services as well for students. EMU is a Christian university affiliated with Mennonite Church USA. EMU's mission and vision are grounded in enduring biblical values of Christian discipleship, community, service, and peace. And these values are embodied throughout the university in our distinctive commitment to peace building, social justice, cross-cultural engagement, and sustainability. Also, EMU's goal is to create unifying leaders. Um, EMU students are challenged to make the world a better place. There's not a better example than this than uh, Lema Bowie, who's pictured right here. She's a graduate of EMU from 2011. She won the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, and below you can see some of our different uh, stats for country, states, and denominations. This is a list of all of our men's and women athletics programs. We compete at the NCAA Division III level in the ODAC and CVC conferences. All EMU students get into free for games. For financial aid, our average assistance package is $37,000 for each student. And some of our next steps is uh, we definitely strongly encourage you to visit campus and then also apply for uh, EMU for whatever term you're looking at and send up your college transcripts as well. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Our next presenter is from the University of Delaware. And Natasha, you are on mute. Now you'd think I would know better, right? After doing this for so long. So hi everyone, my name is Natasha Reyes Fisher. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Enrollment here at the University of Delaware. And my job is to assist you through the throughout the application process and after um, until you enroll at the university. So here you can see a photo of our campus. It's a very traditional looking campus, very green brick buildings. I actually got my wedding photos taken on this green area right here. Our students love hanging out there, taking pictures, studying, um, and going to different events are, that are also hosted um, in this space. So at the University of Delaware, um, we are really big about the extracurricular experience, um, just working outside of the classroom. So we have over 400 registered student organizations. This includes organizations that are focused on your major, your interests, Greek life. So we have a very um, active campus life. We're not a big suitcase campus. Our students are not going home on the weekends. They are staying here um, and just becoming involved in a very supportive and fun um, community. 
finding greater groups of friends and just really learning, getting access to build it, building different skills that you can build outside of the classroom. Public speaking, for example, I always like to use that. If you are in a leadership position in your club, you're gonna learn to be able to speak in different organizations um, and with different groups of people. And this photo, we have actually a dog as part of our Canine Companions for Independence Club where our students actually raise service dogs um, before they go out, go out to help wounded veterans and those uh, with Alzheimer's and other disabilities. So that's one of the many organizations that you can be a part of here at UD. Um, we are located in Newark, Delaware. So we are close to major cities such as Baltimore, Washington, DC, Philadelphia, and New York. Um, this is very attractive to our students because they can explore these areas and also get access to a lot of different internships and um, cultural activities and weekend outings. Um, like I said, our students are very active. They love to be on campus and love to explore the surrounding areas. We represent 45 states and 68 countries here at UD, with a majority of our students coming from the PA, Maryland, New York, and New Jersey area. Um, at, in the state of Delaware, we actually have 66% of Fortune 500 companies. Um, so, and this is because of how our tax is set up. UD is, uh, the state of Delaware is very tax friendly. So you're going to have a lot of opportunity here in the state of Delaware to really um, expand and get experience in your field. Um, right here in, on campus, downtown Newark runs right through the campus. There's a lot of different restaurants, grocery stores, movie theaters. So a lot going on where our students can hang out, get together with their friends, um, meet with professors, um, study groups, all of those things. Um, we have a lot of great facilities that support all of our students' um, majors, such as our 350-acre farm. We have a science technology, technology and advanced research campus, which is a big hub for the health sciences. We have a virtual reality cave there. And we have a lot of also different other facilities that support STEM majors, hospitality majors, and business majors. At UD, we have about 18,000 undergraduate students. That's a 12 to one student to faculty ratio with an average class size of 35. Um, we are a research one institution. So with our size, um, we get a lot of opportunities where we get to collaborate amongst each other, all other institutions and other organizations. For example, these students in this photo are actually working on a communication system um, with NASA and Mount Cuba, Delaware. So at UD, you can rest assured that even though we're a mid-sized institution, you're going to have a lot of opportunity and get really individualized attention um, and build relationships with your professors. Um, we are the first institution to study abroad. So at UD, we have over 100 programs in 40 different countries. As a transfer student, you can study abroad. UD has a really long winter break, six weeks long. So a lot of students do like to take advantage of that time to do a shorter study abroad um, experience. We have um, over 150 majors and over 100 minors. We have a great tool called the Major Finder where you can learn more about the majors, what we offer. So definitely take the time to check that out. Um, we do accept transfer credits um, from regionally accredited institutions. You need AC or better um, to, so that your credits can transfer over. As a fall of 2022, we will actually change that to C minus or better. We have a tool called the Transfer Credit Matrix where you can see what courses we have on file for your institution. Um, here you can see an example of the institution and how it transfers over to the University of Delaware. This is available to you. So you can always Google um, transfer matrix and see what courses we have on file and what courses you might need to be evaluated. At UD, you wanna make sure that you meet the transfer credit requirements. Every major is different as to what requirements um, you need to have to be considered for admission. So make sure that you do look over this um, when you are considering UD and seeing what specific um, requirements your major you need for your major. To apply, um, you just need to fill out the transfer application. There is an essay and we need all college transcripts, including any dual enrollment throughout high school. If you have less than 30 credits, we will require your final high school transcript and test scores as well. And we can accept unofficial college transcript for the admissions review. We just need the official to transfer your credits over. We have um, some transfer scholarships, the Phi Theta Kappa scholarship, if you're part of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and then our non-resident merit scholarship as well in the qualifications, you can see right here, at least 30 credit hours um, and 3.5 cumulative GPA. Um, we accept transfers for spring and fall. You can actually find all this information as well on our website. Um, if you're interested um, in applying, those deadlines are prior deadlines, not hard deadlines, if you wanna be considered for admission. 93% um, of UD students are either in graduate school or working within six months of graduation. So we feel like UD is a great school to invest your time in. Um, we have a lot of great resources for you to be successful inside and outside of the classroom. If you have, if you want more information, here you can find the email for um, undergraduate admissions, my email, and Teresa Coles from Fairly, who handles handles the transfer credit process. Thank you. 
our next presenter is from St. Leo University. Awesome, thank you so much, Jasmine. I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Awesome, well, thank you everyone for taking some time out of your evening to learn about all these great institutions. Today, I will be representing St. Leo University, which is located in Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, so if you're looking to get out of that chillier weather and come down south, um, St. Leo might be a great fit for you. So my name is Connor Schaefer. I'm the Senior Assistant Director here at St. Leo, and I am actually also a proud alum as well from the Northeast. Um, so if you do have any questions that don't get answered from this presentation today, please definitely don't hesitate to reach out. My contact information is listed at the bottom of the screen. So what is St. Leo University all about? St. Leo was established in 1889 and we're actually the oldest Catholic institution in the state of Florida. We're the second largest Catholic institution right now in the nation, serving just shy of 20,000 students worldwide. But if you do visit our campus um, north of Tampa tomorrow, you're gonna say, Connor, what are you talking about? I don't see 20,000 students on campus. And you're right. So here on main campus, we have just shy of 3,000 students in our undergraduate programs. To give you an idea of the students Student population at the bottom of the screen, we have 45 different states represented and over 100 different countries represented in our student undergrad population. What's cool about our population, we do have education centers throughout the South. Um, you might have heard of St. Leo because we've had, had centers in the past in Virginia as well, um, but we also have our online program around the world. So you're going to get that small campus classroom vibes, about a 14 to 1 student faculty ratio on our traditional college campus. But at the end of the day, you're also going to have the large school resources and amenities and networking systems as well at St. Leo. We are currently ranked number four in the South for best value, so you know you're going to get a great education out of your college investment. To apply to St. Leo, we do have our free application um, on our website, which as a transfer, I highly recommend that's the easiest way to go about it, but we do accept the common application for transfer students as well. Um, we are test optional and then also for scholarships, um, this is going to be a big area. St. Leo is really good transfer scholarships. We even have a 50% um, off Study Florida scholarship, which basically all it is, is you need an associate degree from any institution um, in the country and we automatically will give you a 50% percent off tuition scholarship. Uh, so that's definitely a big thing when you're looking into scholarships and transferring. St. Leo does have over 50 different academic programs spread out under four different colleges and one school. Some of our popular programs will be our criminal justice, education, biology, psychology. Um, so those are some of our more popular programs. Uh, we do have our honors program and accelerated degree program. So even as a transfer student, you can partake in any of our three plus one accelerated programs and our three plus three pathway to law school, where we do have a partnership with Barry University down in Miami and then Florida State University up in Tallahassee. Some of our newer majors on campus this previous year is our BS in Health Education and um, Health Promotions. We also have our brand new nursing program and we're very excited this coming year we will have our BS in Robotics and Artificial Intelligence. So I always said as a student, especially coming from out of state, if you are bored on campus, it's truly just because you're not taking advantage of what the university has to offer. So St. Leo does have over 70 different clubs and organizations, um, wide range of different things. This could be Greek life, esports, intramurals. Um, the list honestly goes on and on. We are a Division II NCAA um, school, so we are a part of the Sunshine State Conference with over 23 different athletic programs. And just to give you an idea, about 400 of our students are student athletes on campus. We do have over 14 different residential halls on campus. So we are a residential campus. So if you're looking to transfer in the one cool thing about St. Leo, all of our housing options, um, especially as a transfer student, sometimes you wanna make sure you're not living in that traditional um, first year housing. All of our, our residence halls on St. Leo's campus are apartment style. Um, so you'll have a wide variety of ranges of different things to choose from when it comes to your housing options. Some of our apartments actually have been in the top 10 dorms in the nation. Um, recognized. So that's definitely a cool thing. Um, some of the rooms I used to live in or apartments, it kind of looked more like a hotel. So that's one thing that I always really liked about living on campus at St. Leo. 
we have a lot of different things happening on and off campus. One big thing, especially coming from out of state again, is going to be our off campus trips. So we'll bring our students to places in Orlando, like the parks or um, downtown Tampa, if you want to see a musical or go indoor skydiving. Um, we even bring snow tubing onto the campus with other things as well. So uh, there's definitely a lot of things going on, especially with the professional organization teams. We'll bring our students to the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who were actually the exclusive educational partner too. So it's definitely a fun time to be in the Tampa Bay area. If you are worried about going out of state, we actually are the safest school in the state of Florida and seventh in the nation. Food, there's a lot of food options on campus. One of my favorites are Benedict's Coffee House that serves Starbucks products. Um, we have Fuse, which is kind of like a convenience store, um, our dining hall as well, which is buffet style. And then we actually have our own food truck on campus you'll see driving around. I always like to say it's not St. Leo, even through a pandemic year, unless there's new things happening on campus. So this month, actually, we are opening our brand new wellness center that you can see that one of the more recent photos, um, digital photos of it on the bottom right side of your screen. The cool thing about this, if you thought you're coming down south for a resort for college, um, this facility will actually have the largest infinity pool at a university in the state of Florida. So we're really excited about that. Again, just to wrap it up here on the left side of your screen, you have the virtual tour QR code. I know it's kind of hard to get down to Florida um, to come on campus for a tour, but you can take advantage of that. And then you could request additional information on the right side of your screen. Again, thank you so much for learning about all these great institutions today, um, and especially St. Leo University down in Florida. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Connor. So that concludes the presentation portion of our session. Now we're gonna to transition to the q and I wanna encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn on your cameras and I will pose a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. The question is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? I think as far as Mason goes, one thing I want students to remember is that uh, we are really a university that's built upon how great a location that we have right outside DC. So with that location, there are so many internship and job opportunities. You can go into the city for all the entertainment and all the sports that are happening and just the food scene itself. So you're really getting the best of both worlds if you're getting all the access to DC and what the city offers, but you're also getting a traditional college campus environment at Mason as well. And we're just very friendly to the transfer students. So we're more than happy to have transfers come and join our Mason Nation. What I would like students to remember about the University of Delaware, um, the main thing is enrichment. If you're looking to really go above and beyond just your major um, and what's done in the classroom, we do have a lot of opportunity here for you. Um, we have a lot of different relationships relationship with, with a lot of different major corporations and organizations in the state of Delaware. So enrichment and opportunity is something that will be available to you here. We try to make sure that our students are well equipped when they graduate so that they can secure jobs sometimes even well before graduation. So what I would like students to know about Mary Baldwin, and this will um, kind of be similar for EMU as well, because we're only a half hour from each other, um, but we are both located in what I like to call the college corridor of 81. Um, so really within a 30 minute um, drive from Mary Baldwin's campus, you can get to UVA, JMU, EMU, Bridgewater College, um, Washington and Lee, Virginia Military Institute, um, just to name a few. So if you are looking for a fun area to come to college where you may run into um, some of your, your friends from uh, high school and community college, then um, this is the area for you. Thanks for uh, giving that shout out, Carly. Um, but also for EMU, I would just say all of our experiential learning opportunities we have for students, every major does have internship opportunities. Um, and so we just wanna make sure our students are succeeding after they uh, leave EMU. Um, and so just those experiential opportunities within the local area, but then also, as I mentioned earlier in DC as well too. 
For St. Leo, I would definitely say it's going to be that affordability. Um, the fact you can go to a private institution out of state um, and get 50% off your tuition just for having an A, an associate degree, AA, AS, um, doesn't matter. That's definitely a big factor, especially um, when transferring, you want to make sure it's still affordable. Thank you all. Final question here. Can you share advice that you would give someone going through the transfer search process? So I think as far as advice I would give to uh, folks when it comes to transfers, the search process, the admissions process, um, since I've gone through that process myself is whenever possible, really go and visit the schools that you're thinking about transferring to because Nothing really beats having that experience of having your feet on campus and getting to be really uh, fully in that environment that would be your next stage of your college journey. And really seeing, you know, are you gonna be able to become a part of that community or is it gonna be a good fit for you? And I think that that is really huge is, is getting that in-person experience with that college whenever possible, because that can really shape your opinion of that school and if it's going to be a good fit for you or not. I would definitely agree with that. Um, and, and even going off of that, see if you, um, when you are visiting the campus, can sit in on a class um, because th that's really the best way for you to know if it's going to be a, a good fit for you um, academically is, is being in that classroom. My advice would be to really that if you if if the school offers it, I know UD we do um, offer advising, like um you know if, if as a prospective student you don't have to be an applicant, so just becoming familiar with what the admissions requirements are and meeting with an advisor to make sure you know that your credits are going to transfer over accordingly that um they they are going to go towards your degree that usually helps my students just feel more comfortable with transferring because that is the number one question that I get how are my credits going to transfer over you know how long is it going to take me to graduate so getting that advising prior to even applying is very helpful and just makes you make a well informed decision um, when transferring to any school yeah other than I mean, my first initial advice would just be visit as many schools um, as you possibly can like uh, that you're considering, but also just utilizing your admissions counselor or whoever is like your contact point for the admissions and transferring process. Um, and just making sure they're getting, they're answering all the questions you have and putting you in contact with anyone you need to talk to, whether it's financial aid, professors, the registrar uh, or other op offices as well. I always like to say, um, kind of to piggyback off the visiting the schools, um, definitely keep an open mind throughout the process, just like you did when you were graduating from high school. Um, the same thing goes for when you're transferring. You might be looking at schools local, or you might be looking at schools down south. If you asked me originally if I was going to school in Florida from New Jersey, I would have said there's no way. Um, and then I actually had the opportunity to tour and things like that, and it changed everything. Um, so definitely just keep an open mind in the process. And like everyone else said, definitely utilize your resources. We're here to help. Thank you all, thank you so much. So we're approaching the end of our session uh, for today, but I have a few closing announcements. As you exit the Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. I also want to remind you to sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site and also, you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash Virginia. I want to thank all of our amazing presenters for joining us, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great night.